We're finishing up、uh, the Book of Acts as we finish up the year, and I want to give you a little,、uh, I guess, introduction,、uh, especially for those of you who are joining for the first time today. And there are people, okay, and none of you came here by accident. What do you mean? You know, I came by myself. Yes,、uh, you came. Because of your will, free will, but、uh, the truth of the matter is,、uh, God brought you here today, and God is here. Isn't that why we are here? Okay, and He wants to speak to you today. So, if you could listen, okay, if you could listen, because you should listen if God is God, okay, and especially if you're in darkness. If you were to look at your heart right now, would you say it's bright or dark? You know, we talked about this last week, and、uh, you may be、uh, a little bit、um, upset to talk about this, but you shouldn't be because that's what Christianity is about. That's what Jesus came to do. Is your is your heart、uh, rather dark or bright? Would you look up here, please? Yeah, please. I'm, I want to speak to you. Okay, I don't want to talk to you. You know, please. Would you say it's bright or dark? Okay. So today, thirty-third message, last one. I think it's pretty meaningful, especially in biblically thirty-three, and the title did epilogue, meaning after. What happens after the book? Okay, epilogue of the book of Acts, and I subtitled. If you could look at this, his. Story continues. Yeah, I think it is meaningful. Okay, I don't know whether you know, history is his story. It really is, actually. If God is God, it's his story. Okay, and I prepared this last message, really thinking、uh, those who do not understand Christianity. I really try to do this. I'm going to try to do that. Okay, I was born in 1990. Two, and I'm gonna live up to, I don't know,、uh, 1992, 2070. Okay, should I give you a little more? Okay, now 2090. Okay, you live up to 95 years old, whatever, right? But it begins and it ends. Did you know that? Okay, we don't really think about it, but it ends. 2017, we just started、uh, the first week of December. Which is the last month of the year? Whether you like it or not, the end always comes. It always comes. Your semester always comes. End of the semester always comes. End of the day always comes. End of the year always comes. End of the book、uh, comes. And you know what? The end will come. Okay. I think we need to put this into perspective for you to live smart, wisely. Otherwise, you look like very,、uh, you know, not very wise, foolishly. Do you understand? Okay. So let me begin with that. His story. It's his story, and we spend the entire year of 2017. For those of you who were here in the beginning of the year, of a, of a, your adult life, and talking about this one book. Okay, one book. Okay, and I really. Ask you to try to put this together、uh, today, okay? I'm gonna read uh, what um, May just read. This is the first chapter, first verse, and you may be、uh, you may be thinking, aren't you gonna talk about epilogue? Yes, but it's so interesting. The first eleven verse of the book really talked about the entire book. That's why I want to read it, okay? In the first book, O Theophilus, it's a letter. That he's writing. Luke was a doctor, physician, and historian, and he investigated very carefully. And he wrote two books. One is Gospel of Luke, and one is the Book of Acts. Okay, and it is it, it is meant to be part one and part two, and then he kind of sort of hints there's going to be part three. It's a trilogy. Okay, so Luke the Gospel is the part one. And the book of Acts is part two, and part three continues. His story continues 
In the first book of the trilogy, O Theophilus, that's someone that he's writing to. Luke is writing to Theophilus. Interestingly, the name means Theo, God, Phyllis, love, God lover. I think it was a nickname, okay? But someone who is a dignitary probably. I've dealt with what Jesus began to do and teach. What is that? The Gospels. Luke, right? So he, he wrote that book. Until the day when he was taken up. What is he talking about? His ascension. Okay? That's where the gospel ends. And after he had given commands through the Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself alive. He resurrected. Okay? Separating Christianity from everything else. He is alive and he conquered death. Okay? To them after his suffering cross, by many proofs appearing to them during 40 days after his resurrection, Jesus stayed around for another 40 days and shown up to more than 500 people on 10, more than 10, 10 occasions. It's a historical fact. Legally reliable. We talked about this this year. Okay? Even the professors at Harvard uh, Law School or ha Harvard uh, Historical History School, they, uh, they say it is reliable. Reliable that he's, uh, he, he is alive and he's resurrected. Speaking about the kingdom of God. Okay? Verse 4, And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for a promise, something he promised. Okay? And that's the beginning of the book. The promise of the Father, which he said, you heard me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the main person of the book of Acts. Or history. His story. Okay? From many days from now. Okay? A few more verses. Verse 6. So when they had come together, they asked him, Jesus, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And Jesus said to them, No, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by His own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That's the theme verse. Okay? It just unfolds that one verse. That's history. And that's the book of Acts, and that's history. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Where is the ends of the earth, by the way? We're living in 21st century. Well, you know, I traveled a lot over the years, last 35 years. Where is the end, ends of the earth? Is it Africa? Is it Southeast Asia? Or is it, I don't know, you, you try to answer this. Like, where is the ends of the earth? Like, we are now in a living in a world where everywhere in the world you could get there in, in 24 hours. That's how simple it got. In fact, it'll get even faster. Right? Interesting. Right? It's a promise. It's a promise that when the Holy Spirit comes, you will be my uh, witnesses, and you're going to go to the ends of the earth. Okay? Interesting. Verse 9, and when he has said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up. You got to picture this. And a cloud took him out of the sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them and rode. In other words, he ascended. Can you picture that? This is a historical book. This is not a myth. Yeah, up, up here. Yeah, up here. He ascended. He's alive. Either you have to believe this, or reject this altogether, I think. Right? He ascended. And, you know, disciples were watching Jesus being ascended. And angels said to them, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way. Did you know that? This is Christianity. This is the gospel. Gospel means good news. And I try to be very, uh, uh, I want to explain this 
for those who, of you who do not understand the gospel, uh, Christianity. God, Jesus, resurrected Jesus is coming back and he's going to consummate the world. Mm. Okay? In the same way as you saw him into heaven. Okay? Okay. So this is what I thought about this week as I was uh, finishing up the book of Acts. What words uh, really come to your mind? What thoughts? What, you know, what, what is the major te teaching in the book of Acts? Seven words. It's pretty sequential, okay? And I'm going to explain one by one. It won't take too long, but if you would just look at this, okay? First, Holy Spirit. Yeah, you probably ag agree with that, right? It begins with the coming of the Holy Spirit, and it end the gospel ends with uh, Jesus being ascended. Sort of like a switch. He ascends and Holy Spirit descends. Huge transition in history. Okay? Second, church. Very important. Okay? Holy Spirit and church, they always go together. In fact, church was birthed because of the coming of the Holy Spirit. Okay? And then witness. You will be my witness. Martus. Legal term. Someone who's willing to give his life for what he believes. And you know what? Twelve disciples in the next 40 years, all of them gave uh, their lives to witness the resurrection of Jesus. Okay, something we talked about. Okay, fourth, promise. Promise is what? All the way to the ends of the earth, and he's coming back. That's a promise. To us, it's later, right? But Jesus promised that. And the gospel, obviously. What is the gospel? Okay? Oh, he loves me. And he died for me. Absolutely good news. But that's not the end of the gospel. He resurrected. He's coming back. Okay? That's the gospel. And, of course, he's coming back. And then, finally, I thought everything is about grace. Right? So, let's go one by one. Okay? Holy Spirit. You know, Holy Spirit is God. And what separates Christianity from everything else is that God is within you if you're a Christian. Holy Spirit lives in you and with you. That's, that's a good news, isn't it? Oh, no, 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 I'm not ready to do that. You know, I'm not ready to do that. I'm not ready to give up. Oh, no, no, no. But you know what? Holy Spirit is God who lives with you and in you. If you have spirit in your heart, can you say amen? Okay, there are people. And whether you have or not, you know it. No one else can diagnose that for you. Okay? And I, we, have a, we have an idea. Because you know the tree by the fruits, the Bible says. Clearly. Right? Holy Spirit. Now, here's the, here's the key verse of Book of Acts. Okay? But, when you uh, but you will receive power, the word dunamis, dynamite. The word dynamite came from dunamis, okay? You will receive dunamis, dynamite, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, okay? And you will be my witnesses. That's what the story is about. That's what Christianity is about. That's what book of Acts is about. That's what your life is about if you're a Christian that you be a witness, okay? In Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Uh, if you remember this book, it begins in Jerusalem, a small city compared to Rome, okay? But it goes from Jerusalem to all Judea, okay? And to Samaria, and to the en ends of the earth. And it's interesting that the story ends in Rome, which was the capital of the Roman world, okay? You're living in New York City right now. I don't know whether that excites you. Some of you like New York, some of you don't like New York. How many of you like New York? Can you say amen if you like it? I'm gonna say it again. How many of you like living in uh, New York City? Can you say amen? Wow, really? The rest of you don't like New York? You know, I travel to different parts of the world. When I pe tell people that I live in New York, they were like, oh, wow, you're so lucky. You live in New York? 
I love living in New York. I do, actually. I really do. I lived in this city since 79. Okay. So how many years is that? I can't do math anymore. Yeah. 79, about 20, no, 30-some years. And I love uh, living in New York City. Right? I love the nature. I love the city. I love the mix and multi uh, ethnicity and I love doing ministry in New York City especially now after understanding Book of Acts I really do I love living in New York City I love living in New York City because I know he loves me and he placed me here that's why I love okay so it starts from Jerusalem and, and, and Judea Samaria and all the way to Rome and you are living in Rome-like city of the world right now. And I just pray that the Holy Spirit and may the grace of God will awaken you, some of you. Right? So it begins with the Holy Spirit. It begins with Jesus taking up and, and Holy Spirit coming down. For those of you who do not know, three persons, one God. That's Christian God, triune God. Second person of Jesus, ascend. He died and resurrected and He ascended and He sent the Holy Spirit. It's a good thing because Jesus was local, human body. But Holy Spirit is everywhere, omnipresent, and He's in you. That's a Christian faith. If you consider other religions, it's not like that. Other religions, they fearfully approach God. It's fear-driven religion. If you don't do this, you'll be judged. Fear-driven religion. Therefore, you have to function, you have to work, you have to perform. It depends on you, your work. But Christianity, opposite. He came to us because He's merciful toward, toward us. Do you see the difference? I hope you see the difference. Do you see the difference? All the other religions, you have to perform because otherwise you'll be judged. That's fearful. When you stand before, you know, I talked to this uh, Muslim in London uh, in July. He's, a, he's one of those a leader, rabbi kind of person. And then he talked like, you know, he invited us in, into his apartment. Very confident. I think he studied Islam. He's very confident. He spoke to me for like an hour, just pounding on Christianity. Right? He was telling how Christianity is ridiculous, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then I was just looking for an opportunity, Lord, would you allow me to speak just, just for a moment? And then finally my opportunity came. I, I told you the story before. And, and to this uh, rabbi kind of person, teacher kind of person of Islam, he's a professor at a, a college there. Right? I asked him, uh, Muhammad, his name was Muhammad. Muhammad, when you stand before Allah and you'll be judged, how do you feel about it? When you stand before Allah, you'll be judged. Big scale. That's what they believe. How do you feel about that thing? And he tried to avoid the answer. He tried to avoid the answer. He tried to talk about something else. No, 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 no. Uh, Muhammad, I'm asking you one question. I didn't talk much. You talk, you, you talk everything. I'm just going to ask you a question. You're going to stand before Allah, and you'll be judged. How do you feel about that? And he said, I'm afraid. And I was like, and I asked him, is that okay with you? Is that okay with you? Of course it's not okay. Fear paralyzes people. When you're in fear, you cannot love anybody. Did you know that? That's why when you fear other people, you can't love anybody, including yourself. That's why darkness is so bad. When you fear other people, how do you love other people? They cannot go together. When you are in darkness, when you fear other people, you cannot love other people nor yourself. Right? So, Holy Spirit is in you. That's the great message of Christianity and the book of Acts. Two, church. Okay? When the Holy Spirit came, what happened? Church was birthed. We're in a church. And I hope you have a better 
proper understanding of what church is. Can we just take a look at it? Okay. God draw the picture for what church is supposed to look like. Please, please pay attention. For those, especially those of you who grew up in church all your life, see if we do church similarly or differently. Okay. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayer. And they, all, they were in awe, came upon every soul. Many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And whole, all who believed were together, had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the uh, proceeds uh, to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together, breaking bread in their homes. They received their food with glad and generous heart, praising God, having favor with all the people. The Lord added to their number, day by day, those who were being saved. I don't know. I, I, we're not going to spend much time about it. I kind of titled it Community. Church is about community, together. Do you feel like we do church similarly now? Do you feel like Asian American church or Western church is similar to this picture or is it somewhat similar or do you feel like it's vastly different? You, you figure that out. But this is what church is. This is what Holy Spirit does. This is what Christ does. When Holy Spirit comes and Christ shines upon your heart, you don't fear people anymore. You love people. So you want to you wanna be together. Darkness, you want to separate. You want to hide. You don't want other people to know you. You don't want other people to come near you. Do you feel like that? That's darkness. That's darkness. That's not Christianity. Right? When Holy Spirit comes upon you, you understand how much He loves you, regardless of your past and present. We talked about predestination last night, which is the word of grace. Anything that God does is grace. If He treats you with justice, <laughs> none of us will be sitting here. Okay? And people say, see, He's not just. Look at the cross. He is just. What about you? See, then why is He doing that? He is merciful. What about you? Are you merciful? He is merciful and just. But I'm not merciful nor just. He loves me and I did not love him. That's not fair. But that's the good news, right? That's the Christianity, Christian message. Church is a community. Okay? And the key word is witness, right? This is the key word. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be my witnesses. And this is, this, yeah, I don't know whether you can see it, leather large man. His name is Charles Spurgeon, okay? He's known as the Prince of Preachers, Metropolitan Tabernacle in early 20th century in London. Such a large crowd gathered. He's a great, great, great pastor. And he says, take a look at this, okay? You have never truly found Jesus if you do not tell others about him. Okay. Charles Spurgeon. I happen to agree with him. But people get upset about this, this kind of statement. That's why I bring Charles Spurgeon. Yeah. Okay. You have not, never truly found Jesus if you do not boast about him. I would say, yeah. People, we have deviated, I think, quite a bit. We have deviated quite a bit from biblical Christianity. See if you are a biblically a Christian or not. That's what I'm asking you to think about. When the Spirit comes upon you, He's God. Co-equal, co-eternal. It's, it's, that's the term uh, in history. 
AD uh, 325, Council of Nicaea, all the church leaders of the world gathered together. Who is Holy Spirit? Who is Jesus? He, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they are co-equal and co-eternal with God the Father. That's Holy Spirit. And He lives in you and with you. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ, okay? So, next, uh, promise. You know, Christianity about pro is, is about promise, and it, pro it promises about the end. Do you know of any literature or any religion, any ideology that speaks about the end clearly? Do you know of any religion, any ideology, any book, that speaks about the end clearly, you should think about this. Because you know deep inside, don't you wonder what happens after I end? Don't you wonder that? I just decompose and just kind of disappears from ash to ash. Really? Is that how it is? Not according to the Bible. And you know, deep inside, you think the same. Don't you? Is life about this side of eternity? Things that we buy, things that we eat. Is that what it is? Is that how you think? Don't you wonder what happens after you die? You do, right? Because God innately place that desire in you. That's why you wonder that. La Banquet uh, last Sunday was wonderful. So many wonderful things to say about it, but so many people came because so many of you asked. That's why I'm so excited. I don't think they would have come unless you asked them. And I don't think you would have asked them unless you prayed for them and loved them and believed in, believe in Christ. I really do think like that. And here's the second thing. I don't think they would have come unless they see something in you. Don't you think? You're a lousy person. And let's say, oh, no, I'm not saying that. You're just, yeah, you just don't look like a Christian. Do you think they'll come? I don't think so. <laughs> but they came because I believe they saw something in you, I think. Uh... I don't know how many exactly, uh, but eight or nine mothers came, right? Mothers were so emotional. Mothers are very difficult to evangelize. Mothers are very difficult to even talk a lot of times. But they came. Why? Perhaps they saw something of Christ in you. That's why I'm excited. Okay? What am I talking about? Oh, promise. Yeah. Promise. Christianity talks about promise. And last uh, love banquet, I talked about who am I? Do you know who you are? Remember we talked about this? Do you know where you come from? Do you know where you're going? Do you just ignore these things and just go? Is that a wise thing to do? The Bible promises the end rather explicitly all of the places, bluntly and clearly. Okay. You would be unwise for you to ignore that, I think. Okay. It'll be unwise thing for you to ignore that. And Bible speaks about that. It'll reach in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. Jesus said, this gospel will be preached to all the nations and all ethnicity, and the end will come. That's, this, that's how explicit it is. Right? If Jesus is... Uh, anybody could say that. Anybody could claim things like that, right? A lot of people do that, and they're wrong, right? But Jesus proves that with His words by resurrection. You know, we talked about during this year of 2017. Okay, for those of you who do not know what that word means, He was dead, and He, he, he came alive. Really? That's what Christianity is about. And a lot of people say, oh, I don't know. I don't know whether we, I could believe that. And we spend days, right, weeks talking about trustworthiness, reliability of the Bible. 
Is Bible trustworthy? Right? I think this is, this is the hinge. If this is not trustworthy, everything is up in the air. But if this is trustworthy, then you need to pay attention to this. Right? We talked about how incredibly reliable this book is. More than Homer's Iliad, more than any of the ancient literatures, incredibly reliable. 66 books, documents, written over the period of 1,500 years. Just think about it, 1,500 years. Over 30 authors, different professions, and they come together as one book, and they make an incredible uh, uh, consistency. Is that possible? How about this? Something that was predicted 1,000 years ago, okay, and 300 predictions came together in reality in one person. Is that even possible? Just think logically, people. It's not possible. But that's, that's the Bible. What about resurrection? Is that historically reliable? Is that legally reliable? One of the uh, compelling reason why resurrection is real is that because 12 disciples along with thousands of christians were willing to lay down their lives if it was a lie do you think they will lay, lay down their lives it's a compelling evidence chuck colson for those of you who uh, do not know him he was one of the counsel to richard nixon in 70s of uh during the watergate okay Many of you may not know what, what I'm talking about. Historical event. And Chuck Olson was a lawyer and counsel to President Nixon. And, you know, they were caught and they were put into prison. Within, these are the top people who was controlling the world at the time. And they were placed in prison. And they all uh, uh, told uh, the judges that we are lying. That we have committed crime. They are not willing to willing to lie, uh, willing to admit it and die for it within two weeks. But apostles, every single one of them, next 40 years, not backing off with the evidence of resurrection. They all died incredibly painful death, either beheading, crucifixion, or burned alive. And Chuck Colson is saying, that's a compelling evidence, legally speaking why the resurrection is real. Can I just ask you, if Jesus is God and He resurrected, what do you plan to do about that? Can I just ask you, what do you, do, what do you plan to do about that? I'm just going to go ahead with my life and just run my course. That's dumb. I think that's something you should pay attention to. If he is God, and he said he will rise in three days, and he did, and there are more than 500 eyewitnesses, you know, in history, what are you going to do about that? You must pay attention to this. He said this, if you believe in me, you will never die. You will never die. That's a promise promise. Did the gospel go to the ends of the earth? Well, it ends in Rome, in book of Acts, chapter 28. I don't know exactly where the ends of the earth is, right? But gospel goes forth from this small city compared to Rome, from Jerusalem to Antioch to all over the Turkey, Asia Minor, and Macedonia, Achaia, and Corinth, right? Syria, and all the way to Rome. And then he went to Spain, and then he came back to Rome. Come on, people. Right? I think we need to put things into perspective. What he promises will be fulfilled. That's the basis of Christianity. He said, I am coming back to judge the living and the dead. 
If you're a Christian, you don't have to be fear. I don't fear it. I don't. I mean, I revere it. I mean, I fear it, but not fearfully uh, paralyzed. No, I'm not. No. I'm so motivated to live toward that day. What about you? Okay. And the gospel. Okay. What is gospel to you? Uh, good news. What is, what is the good news to, to you? A lot of people say gospel that stops uh, is death of Jesus Christ. And John MacArthur is saying that is incomplete. That's all people talk about. Cross. He loves me. He died for me. Great message, but that's incomplete. So clear in the, in the book of Acts. What is, what was the key thing, key message of the gospel in the book of Acts? Resurrection. Do you believe it? I just want to ask you, do you believe it? If you don't, you don't believe in the gospel. You need to believe in the resurrection. And there are ramifications of that if you believe in resurrection. Right? Ramifications to that. Six, his promise, his coming back. Is this what, he see, what we see in the beginning of the book, right? Man of Galilee, why are you looking up to heaven? Jesus, you see going up, he will coming back exactly the same. He's coming back. He's coming back soon. The word imminent, it means soon. And you're saying, oh, he didn't come back for 2,000 years. Yeah, but 1,000 years is like one day, and one day is like 1,000 years to him. The reason he's not coming right now is not because he's slow to keep his promise, but he's patient towards you because he desires all men to be saved. He wants you to repent. Instead of thickening your heart. He's coming back though. Okay, that's the message that we see in the book of Acts. And finally, grace. Okay, I think soul, right? A vicious hater, persecutor who wanted to annihilate every Christian becomes Paul of the Bible. I don't think this is about Paul. I think it's about God of Paul, if you know what I mean. I don't think it's about Paul. And the gospel go forth from a beggar in the, uh, be before the temple, the beautiful in Jerusalem, all the way to the emperor. Who needs the gospel? Beggar, all the way to the emperor. Mr. Trump needs to repent and believe in Jesus. And so do you and I. Mr. Putin needs to believe in Jesus. He's going to stand before him one day. He, he will. Kim Jong-un will stand before the Lord. He will. You know, Korea situation is getting really intense. It bothers me a great deal. I was reading this morning, right? Americans sent that still plane there. You know what that is? This is one of those planes that it does not get caught by radar. In other words, they could just go and attack. And it's in Korea right now. U.S. top weapons are in Korea right now. For next one week, Korea, South Korea and U.S. will be practicing the drills together. Ah. Oh. You know, if you put yourself in as a one of the citizens of North Korea, how would you feel about that? Oh, that's, that's a horrible feeling, right? Your enemies are practicing with the most advanced equip, uh, you know, uh, you know, weapons in the world right next there. Grace. From a beggar to an emperor. I don't know like where you position yourself in this world and this society. When I was in my 20s, uh, those of you who knew when I was in 20s, nobody could teach me anything. I was just so proud. Nobody, don't even try. I was like, <laughs> you know. 
Uh, no, right now, no. Turn 55. I talk to my wife, you know. My wife and I, we talk about, Ellen, let's live. Let's live right. Let's live right. What will matter at the end? Let's live right. right. Let's love God. Love our children. Love those who are hurting. Love the people. Share Jesus. Share Jesus. You know why we are sitting here? Grace. Grace is, you and I believe in the gospel, not because we are wiser or more righteous than anyone else, but because God graciously intervened. Opening our hearts to heed His word and believe. There's only one way you could, you could believe when God intervenes your heart. There's only one way. There's only one way. When God pours grace upon your heart. Right? Book of Acts, part two finished, but trilogy continues. It, it is continuing through his people until the end comes. When is that? We don't know. But Jesus said, soon. Okay? And he loves you. And he's not slow to keep his promise. But he's patient towards you. Aren't you glad that he's patient towards you? Because he wants all of you to come and, and, and live and be saved. Let's pray.